Aloha, I'm Randy Pilts, running for mayor of Maui County. I've been born and raised here, and uh, my mom and dad are from Maui, Hattie from the Kukahiko family down in the Kihei McKenna area, and Adolph from the Kaowawa family over in Ulapalakua and Kanayo area. I went to Kamehameha schools. After that, I went to the University of Dayton. Uh, after completing the University of Dayton, I went to work for the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. It was similar to this kind of time that we have right now, where many people were unemployed and I needed a job, so I worked as a deputy sheriff for four and a half years. After that, I worked with General Electric Company for six and a half years. I ended up as a sales engineer. I returned to Maui to help my dad with Pilts Electric, a company that was started in 1946. During that time, we rose and we, I took over the company. Uh, my children helped me in that company. Since then, Pilts Electric has been closed, uh, sadly enough, because my children did not want to be involved in that. And you could see the economy turning. I was involved mainly over the past 30 years in construction. And this is my background right now, but I do have many, many family and friends in Maui. The first question is in regards to development. What are your thoughts on smart growth and what will you do to prevent urban sprawl in Maui County? Smart growth. There's several projects that has come online. You know, I was on the State Land Use Commission for the past five years. And one of the ones that come to mind is Pulelehua, which was with Maui Land and Pine. There's about 800 homes. Uh, another one that was out there was uh, Oluwalu. That just came up just recently. And they hired consultants that wanted to do smart growth. And we also have another project, Honua Ula, that's been sitting around for almost 20 years. And they've instilled smart growth entities. But you know, Unless these projects get done, we're not going to see what smart growth really is. Let me address urban sprawl. GPAC has been going on for three and a half years. The people have stated that's what they want is to control where the our people are going to live, businesses are going to grow. Until that has been accepted, and then the community plans have been put together, we're, we're not gonna see where we go. So as your next mayor, I will have to say, let's see what happens. And I know the county council is working on it. And these are the kind of things that we have to look at and how we control where we grow and where we take our urban boundaries. For permitting, what are your thoughts on the county's permitting process for bed and breakfast? Should the approval of B&Bs rest in the hand of the council members or the mayor's appointed planning director? Yeah, addressing B&Bs. When I was on the planning commission for five years and its chairman my last year there, we addressed many of the B&Bs, but the process is just so long that there are many uh, entities out there that want to go through the process Want to, want to comply, but our permitting process is broken. And as your mayor, I will go ahead and look and make sure that our planning director is in line with the way I feel we should be doing things. Unless we fix the, the system and we have a planning director that knows how we want to move along with it, and then I can talk with the county council and get to cooperation. The biggest thing is getting cooperation within these various organizations. We, we have to change, we have to get something working better. There's been a lot of fires on island recently. One of them has been attributed to fireworks. If elected, would you support or be opposed to a fireworks ban? You know, th that one's really a tough, tough situation because uh, we have those that r believe that that's part of their culture and everything. And then just for recreation, I, I really don't see it. And at times when we do have dry seasons like we have now, 
then I don't think we should have it at all. So as far as I'm concerned, it's got to be a limited process. It can't be, okay, well, it's the holiday season and this is when we usually do it and let's do it. Because if we have a dry situation that we have now, it's going to endanger life. And my whole thing is that, you know, public safety is number one. Transient accommodations tax was a big issue this past session. If elected to serve, what would you do to ensure that Maui keeps its share of the TAT? That's, that's a good one because, you know, uh, the mayor has to work with the visitor industry and lobby the legislature in order to get the money back that they put into it and that our visitors pay for, unless we go out to the legislature and request relief of those funds, we're never going to see it. I was talking to one of the managers over in Kanapali, and he was saying that because of the situation that we're in right now, they're providing discounts, they're lowering their rates just to get the visitors to come in. And what we get back in our TAT for the whole county of Maui, that one hotel spends more in advertising and discounting. We're, we're not really getting the money that we put into it. So as your mayor, I will have to go out there and make sure I solicit those people in the legislature to return more of those funds. What are your plans to improve wastewater treatment on Maui and your thoughts about injection wells? I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, right now we have here in central Maui one plant that's on the ocean, and I know they've fortified the, the structure, but should there be a massive tsunami, we'd be out. So I would think right now is a good time to plan for, and especially with GPAC coming in, that we now look at some smaller plants in the areas of urban growth. And then also getting funds from the feds, getting funds from the state, so that we can build those and not wait till there is a disaster. Uh, you know, talking about um, the injection wells, uh, my last job was over in Kanapali. And the project that I worked on, uh, we couldn't get county water on the second phase of the project. So we went out and got water from the old Kanapali Water Company, and that was still not enough. So in order to get landscaping uh, irrigation, we had to go to the county and request the use of recycled water, R1. Well, our company paid about $3.2 million for that process. Well, that process was supposed to be to improve our plant there. And as far as I know, the funds have not been used. So as your next mayor, I'll go out and make sure that the funds to take care of these recycled water projects get done. Uh, these are the kind of things that we have to address. And until we do that, and we keep injecting these wastewater, we're gonna have problems in our ocean. And I only addressed the one section in Lahaina, but there has to be additional funds that are sitting there within our budgets that we can use now to get things going and putting people back to work. And finally, is there any closing thoughts? Is your opportunity to maybe touch upon something that I didn't ask you that you think is important or to just give some contact information for constituents on Maui? You know, I've been a businessman for the last 30 years, and I'm requesting that you support my candidacy. Uh, we have our campaign headquarters here in Kahului, but most importantly, I feel that Maui is our home, and we love Maui. I was born and raised here, and I want to see it so that our children and our grandchildren have a place to live, to play, and work. And as far as I'm concerned, one of the major things right now is we can't afford to raise taxes. If we raise taxes now, when the economy gets better, are we going to lower it? You know, that has not happened. So as far as I'm concerned, Ke Koho, the choice, and Randy Pilts is your choice. Mahalo for allowing me to be here.